Greetings, Kindred. So we're coming up to the full moon on the 27th of April. Well, it'll be the 26th in the EDT time zone. But I'm recording this on the 26th in the GMT time zone. So I'm going to get into the times for the three time zones that I work with. So this is also a super moon which really accentuates the energies and there's a lot of shifts going on right now. So our full moon will reach its peak at 43 degrees in Virgo, so in the last degrees of Virgo basically. And the moon will reach her peak at 4.31 in the GMT time zone, at 13.31 in the AEDT time zone and on the 26th of April at 23.31 in the EDT time zone. So, you know, first of all, looking at the overall picture of the energies, I'm just seeing a lot of debate, a lot of arguments, a lot of triggering, but also, you know, people becoming more aware or into a state of higher consciousness. And, um, you know, I feel many of us are being kind of forced out of our comfort zone, especially with this shift that's gone on with um, Neptune recently. You know, so where some of us are in our feelings, that others of us may be a little bit too much in our heads or a little bit too much self-focused on our own opinions, on our own beliefs. So we have this little stellium of planets going on in Aries, which are all in opposition to our moon. And, you know, the moon in Virgo can be kind of a little bit over analytical at times. And it does create a lot of nervous energy, especially when we've got so many planets in opposition. And, you know, those planets are, of course, our sun, who is always in opposition at a full moon. Our sun will be at 8 degrees in um, Aries. And 8 is the number of Saturn. And I'll get into that in a minute. Also, our moon will be in opposition to Uranus, who's conjunct our sun at 11 degrees in Aries. Venus is in opposition to our moon. And um, Venus is also... Oh, well, someone is enjoying the music out there right now. As I mentioned, Venus. <laughs> right, let me pause this for a moment. Okay, I'm back. I have um, a car speaker shop over the road from me. And when they're testing out the speakers in the cars, it's like, wow, even with my windows shut, you can hear it like it's in your own house. Not that I mind sometimes, sometimes I really enjoy it. But when I'm doing a recording, it can be kind of aggravating. But anyway, so talking about Venus and then the music plays. And, you know, I've been saying for the last couple of podcasts, you know, it's all about expressing the voice. But, you know, people are expressing it in um, debates and arguments right now. Not all of us, but some of us are. And really, we should just be chanting or singing or praying you know, to release all this energy. There's just so much energy, but it's a very stuck energy right now. And um, when I say stuck, it's because we're all kind of like either too much in our heads or too much in our feelings or too much in our opinions. And I say we all... um, you know, even some of us enlightened ones can be on that level right now, although we can be aware that we're kind of feeling that. You know, it's a very irritating, triggering energy that I'm seeing right now. You know, especially with all this little stellium in Aries. So getting back to that, because also conjunct Venus is the Black Moon Lilith in Aries, and conjunct the Black Moon Lilith is Mercury who is also conjunct. So this little stellium is causing, you know, this 
shift in consciousness for some, but also, you know, like um, resentments can be coming to the surface or, you know, just this aggravating energy. And it's because it's like we're running on the spot, eager to get something out there, but we're all kind of like restricted in this T-square energy because our moon in opposition to this little stellium is also creating a T-square towards Saturn, who's at 13 degrees in Capricorn. So, you know, this is a really rebelliousness going on right now. Some want to break out of restrictions and want everyone to follow suit. You know, we want to break out of a routine, break out of a rut. But this is where running on the spot, it's like trying to get out of our own feelings or trying to get out of our own heads. It's like very noisy right now. And, um, you know, with this um, grand cross that's been ongoing, I mean, you know, the goddess Pallas is in Aquarius at 17 degrees. Opposition, the goddess Vesta in Leo at 18 degrees. So 18 is actually a difficult number, but 17 is a positive number. So, you know, the goddess Vesta in Leo can be very much inner self-power, but very much self-focused as well. You know, where it can be all about me and not really considering the bigger picture or different ideas or opinions of others. And Jupiter, I mean, Jupiter just moved into Aquarius on the 25th of April. So that's been one shift in energy. And with Jupiter moving into Aquarius, it can cause identity issues. Now, we've been seeing identity issues popping up in 13 star sign astrology for like the last year. But Jupiter entering into Aquarius is now bringing those identity issues to the surface. And um, I think it is going to be more about our mental health, you know. Um, especially with Pallas coming in, showing us all the bigger picture and showing us like patterns in life, whether that be patterns in our own lives as individuals or patterns in, you know, life in general with the collective, with the global. And, um, you know, some people are really coming into a higher awareness, but you know, trying to convince others when they're not ready to hear what you've got to say or have their own belief structure that they're very strong on. You know, it's just like, it's not worth it. You know, but we must all give understanding and be more patient with people that don't see things our way. And... um you know, but there's also what I'm seeing there. There's also this picture about breaking out of abusive relationships. You know, relationships where they're not just intimate. You know, it can be friendships, it can be working partnerships, you know. Any relationship where we feel like we're not being respected, where we're suffering a bit of abuse. And so, you know, breaking that pattern right now is very important for some. And, you know, Mars has moved into Gemini. I mean, he's at two degrees in Gemini now. So that can be a very argumentative energy, but also it can be a very scattered energy as well. So the aim with all the energies I'm seeing here right now at the full moon. It's all about us getting balance within ourselves, coming to terms with our own persona, with our own ideas, with our own belief structures. And I really do feel belief structure is a very big thing, this full moon. But also about 
empowering ourselves from a, a spiritual point of view and not a materialistic one. Because I'm also seeing a lot of materialistic energy here as well. Or, you know, where we want to be noticed, where we want to be heard. So again, I recommend, you know, chanting, praying, singing. I also recommend meditation if you can focus and concentrate on that. But the most ideal thing I think would work if you're in that energy that I'm describing is a trip to the beach. You know, listen to the waves of the sea. It's very calming. Because, you know, with this T-square with the moon and the little stellium in Aries, all aimed towards Saturn, it can create a very stagnant and stuck energy. And I just feel like we need to um, break free from that because it's blocking our creative skills. It's blocking our self-empowerment skills. The good thing is, though, you know, our moon is in sextile to the goddess Vesta and the goddess Vesta is in sextile to Mars. So we can gain a balance if we're able to, you know, with a Virgoian moon creating maybe an, an analytical state of emotions, you know, which I feel is giving us an opportunity to, you know, come to terms with our own belief structures, come to terms with our own way of thinking and find balance in our inner temple, our self-power, self-confidence. So Pluto's been in the shadow, in his shadow of his retrograde since the 25th as well. As Jupiter moved into the sign of Aquarius, Pluto would have gone into shadow. So Pluto will begin his retrograde in Sagittarius you know, um, a little bit later, you know, just a few hours after the full moon reaches its peak in Virgo. So Pluto will start his retrograde at 30 degrees in Sagittarius. Now Pluto will be in square to the goddess Ceres, who's in Pisces right now. So again, you know, this is about self-nurture, self-confidence, you know. Um, it's putting a lot of pressure on our health right now. So we must make sure that we're nourishing ourselves with good food, meditation, you know, anything ritualistic that's going to benefit us and our well-being. So our moon will be at nine degrees in Libra at this point, but he still will be in opposition to that little stellium of planets in Aries and they will all still be in square to Saturn. So I think as Pluto does turn retrograde, you know, there's still going to be these debates or changing of opinions, you know. There's a lot of shifting energy going on here, but it's all about us mastering that energy, mastering our own self-power. And just basically getting comfortable with that, you know. We don't have to prove anything to anyone. You know, as long as we're confident of what we're seeing, of what we're believing, of what we're thinking. You know, that's really all that matters at the end of the day. You know, it doesn't matter who's right, who's wrong. You know, what I've learned actually over this last year is you can put facts in front of people's faces all day long, but they're not going to see it until they're ready to. And um, that's something we all need to come to terms with right now. So, you know, there's a lot of impulsive energy, there's a lot of shifting, there's a lot of I mean, globally, it's very conflicting. And um, we just all need to just focus on 
go in with the flows, go in with the shifts that occur in because it's a very kind of shifting energy right now and Pluto going retrograde again in Sagittarius, I mean that is in a reflection of self truth of um you know our belief structures it's like I just feel there's going to be a lot of change and some of it can be pretty sudden and some of it can be pretty kind of traumatic um like tower moments um it's like that sh more shocking energy with uranus conjunct the sun in opposition to the moon i feel it's like more of a shock really but it's it can just you know pluto just wipes things out so it's like a loss of belief or a loss of faith that I'm feeling with that Pluto energy in retrograde. But it's a shift all the same. And um, I kind of feel whatever leaves us um, is just meant to be because I am seeing a lot going on with relationships. So it could be to do with, you know, relationships and um, sudden endings. I'm also seeing explosive situations now. I don't know if that's kind of like globally or planetary. We've had a few volcanoes go off already. So, you know, whether we're going to see a little bit more of that occur. And, um, you know, or maybe with the world affairs, um, you know, globally, there's a bit going on at the moment. So, you know, it's all about standing strong in our own self-power. And, um, you know, I am seeing a little bit of fear about the future. I am seeing a little bit of dark energy surrounding people or some people at the moment. So for those that are in their higher conscience state, um, yeah, I just feel that... Um, you know, even we can be shocked at certain events that occur. You know, we just have to watch this space right now. But I think the most important thing is to, is to find inner peace and um, inner self-worth, you know, self-confidence. Because I just feel this time, you know, we can really gain a lot of... Um, clarity in certain situations and I think this is especially to do with you know abusive relationships and like I said earlier not just intimate this can be like any kind of relationship business intimate or even global relationships so yeah I think the most important thing is just to keep it real and, um, you know, follow your own guidance. So, Kindred, I'm just sending you all peace and much love.